Second Amendment rights in Texas have always been, well, a little weird. Uh, the concealed carry versus open carry stuff was confusing since, you know, apparently walking around with my AR-15 strapped to my back is okay. But if somebody caught me carrying a pistol unconcealed, I would be in trouble. That seems backwards from the media hype. It's also backwards from the state in which I grew up, in Missouri, because in Missouri, you could open carry, uh, but you had to get a permit for concealed carry. Now, people have been pushing open carry laws for a while, and thank the Lord, Texas's new governor, Greg Abbott, says that he's got his pen warmed up and ready to sign it if it makes it through the Senate, goes back to the House, comes to his desk for approval. Uh, governor Greg Abbott joins us on the phone right now. Governor Abbott, you're making good on your promise. You promised on my show during the campaign that you want to sign, that you're going to sign open carry. Looks like, uh, hopefully, if it can make it back to the House, that that will happen. Dana, I am getting my wrist limbered up. I'm ready to sign that bill and make Texas the 45th open carry state in the country. Do you anticipate that it will make it to your desk without much uh, of a problem? You know, I really do. And, and it's real simple. If, if you were to take a poll of people across the entire country of which state they think is the open carry state of the country, most people would say Texas. And it's just stunning that we actually have a law in Texas that prohibits open carry. And so the time has come and the time is right uh, for us to pass open carry in Texas. And I fully expect for it to reach my desk. Now, what do you say to those who say, well, it's great that we're going to have open carry, but the law, as I have read it and as others have interpreted it, is that open carry will only apply to those that already have their concealed carry permits, their CHL. So if you have your CHL, then you'll be allowed to open carry. There are some, a lot of, a lot of Texas voters, who say, well, we'd really like to see constitutional carry. What are your thoughts in that this bill isn't so much constitutional carry, it's, just, it's, it's basically just allowing CHL ho holders to open carry? Well, I would say the sun has not set on it yet. It's still working its way through the legislative process, and uh, we have one that's passed through the Senate. There'll be another one that passes through the House, and that's when the real bargaining begins as we get down to the end. But what they need to do is to reach uh, the, the maximum protection of the Second Amendment right for people to carry a weapon. And, and, and Dana, that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. Uh, and it, it's time that Texas lives up to the promise of the Second Amendment. I expect us to achieve that uh, by the time this bill reaches my desk. And this, this issue, uh, obviously, very, very much debated in Austin, at least from a lot of people who don't seem to be from the state of Texas who are trying to speak for Texans uh, when it comes to campus carry and when it comes to open carry. Uh, what do you make of this out-of-town influence in Texas politics? Well, it's not the first time that people have tried to inject themselves, Dana. That's exactly what happened with Battleground, Texas, where we had all these uh, Barack Obama folks trying to come into the state of Texas and try to win elections, and look how that turned out for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Non-Texans trying to run Texas does not work. Uh, but secondly, I, I want to convey this message, and that is we have seen open carry in 44 states without any kind of problem whatsoever. And just like it hasn't been a problem in those 44 states, it's not going to be a problem in the state of Texas either. Yeah, and campus carry, that's been obviously a, a big subject of discussion. I've been watching the hearings taking place on that from the live stream coming out of Austin. Uh, what are your thoughts, Governor, on campus carry? Is this something that you support? Oh, yes. I think this, too, will, will come to pass and reach my desk. Uh, again, someone doesn't check their Second Amendment rights at any particular location. Uh, and I think that they will find a, a responsible way to deal with it. In fact, it was the chancellor of Texas A&M. They came out and said that uh, he feels like the students on his campus are responsible enough uh, to abide by the Second Amendment, by by open carry laws, and he has no problem with students on his campus mm -hmm. carrying. I think the same principle will apply at campuses across the state. And and nationwide, you've also spoken as well about the attempted. They said it was a mistake, that they overlooked it, that it wasn't uh, exempted from their regulations, their 2014 regulations. But the ATF backed away from their ban on NATO rounds. But now it looks like it's rearing its head in the form of a new bill from Democrats. While I don't see it gaining traction in the House or the Senate, obviously, with a Republican majority, it's still concerning because it seems as though it's an Overton window of sorts, Governor. They want to classify green-tipped ammunition as being armor-piercing cop killing, but there's no basis in statistics for that. What do you make of that argument? Uh, the argument is a complete violation of Second Amendment rights 